This world is getting bigger and bigger around me as I discover new places around my base. I'm going to need to document exactly where it is I've been and what's around me. What on earth am I going to use to that? Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avermance on Avermancia. I am standing in the middle of this circle that I am yet to make, and no, I ain't going to make it this episode either, but I will be making it soon because I'm really quite excited about doing it. What I am going to do, however, is start to branch out a little bit. By branching out, I mean push the boundaries of this village a little bit more. It's the last episode of 2017. It's New Year's in, what, just a couple of days as I um, release this. So I want to push out the boundaries. And to do that, I need to know where it is I'm going. And to know where I'm going, I need a map. And to not get a map, I need to make some stuff. So I've done some things. You might be able to see something just in the background on the right there that I'll show you in a minute. But I want, just want to show you something else I've done so far. So let me just turn around. There we go. So I'm going to turn around here. I'm coming up here. And I'm running and running and running along this road. Because you know me, I'm all about the roads, me. Loving the roads. And if I come back up here past the Christmas tree, which I really like the Christmas tree. I'm going to leave it on. I think it's Christmas. 365 days of the year in Avermancia. Why not? It could be. Why not? Santa Claus could be coming to town all the time. Look, off of here, I've done a little path, just with like a spade, as you do on the right click. And I've got a little micro sugarcane farm. Now, I did a tutorial for this micro sugarcane farm not that long ago. Link for that should be somewhere on the screen if I've done it right. I don't always get that bit right, but it's interesting. Is the link in the screen or not? Yes. If not, it's still definitely in the description below. But you can see there is a little minecart going like the clappers underneath that. I deliberately put a glass block in there. One, because it's transparent and it means the chest opens. And two, it means you can see that in there. And I thought it was just a nice, interesting little feature. And what happens? We've got, I don't know if you can see through the glass, we've got sugar cane growing in there. Four bits. I mean, this is so simple. All this, four observers, four pistons, some glowstone, some sugar cane, a bit of wood and some um, sand. Doddle. Absolute doddle. Go and have a look at the tutorial. Seriously, it's really, really easy. But as these grow, when they get to the highest point, you can see that observer bit just there. When they get to the highest point, that is an update of the block in front of the observer's face, which means a little red redstone fart comes out of the observer's bum. And there's a block on the observer's bum there, and that charges that block. Like, like you've put electricity into the block. I've fallen over. And that then activates that little bit of redstone because it's proximal to that block, which activates the piston, which knocks that off two blocks down. So it still leaves the bottom one, but it knocks two bits of sugarcane down. That is then collected because there's this thing in the middle here. That is then collected. There's water underneath that bottom glowstone. Don't tell anyone. It's a secret. Um, and because there is literally the only place it can fall is back down on itself, that then gets collected under here with a minecart with hopper and goes into this um, chest and it's a bit simple look and we've got that is there right now and that's been going for a little while and I've collected some already obviously because I made a load of paper because today I need paper why do I need paper because we're gonna make some maps we're also gonna make some compasses and that is how it is all going down so let's crack on with that <laughs> So I've come back to my bedroom, which is where my crafting table is, because I'm going to show you how to make the stuff that I am going to be using today. Now, you may already know this, and that's fair enough, but for those people that don't know how to do this, I'm going to make three different things. The recipes are going to come up on the screen as I do them as well, so you'll see it me doing them, and also the recipe, which may be a little bit of overkill, but never mind. So the first thing we're going to make is not sugar. If you get sugar canes into one square of your grid, you make sugar. That makes sense, right? So you can make potions, you can make cakes, all kinds of stuff. But if you then press shift and spread them across, there we go, spread them across like that, you get paper. So I've got two sugar canes there. Each one of those gives me three paper. So one, two, six paper. I'm just going to do that again like that three paper like that so that those nine sugar canes gave me nine bits of paper so that's how you make paper what we're going to do now is we've got to make a compass now compasses are actually really really quite easy um, you put four bits of iron in a diamond shape like that then you get one bit of redstone and that gives you a compass 
So you can grab that compass and that compass will always, always point to your spawn. Let me just show you. So right now I'm at spawn, which is why when I turn around, it turns around like complete nutcase. And the next thing we want to make is a map. The map is again really simple. You need the compass that you've just made, and then you need the paper that you just made. You need eight bits, spread them around, and you get an empty map. Now, what you've got to be really careful is as soon as you look at this map, it ceases to be an empty map and it becomes a not empty map. So make sure you're not looking at it, um, or that could be very inconvenient. So that is how you make the stuff that we're going to use in this episode. Let's crack on with it. So I've just had a bit of a sleep and I'm coming out my house. Where's the face eaters? There's no face eaters. Good. It's relatively light around this area. So I don't expect to see too many face eaters come around here because I don't want my face eating at the minute. And I'm going to come up and show you or better have something to eat. Look at that. Food. Right. So I'm coming along here. Where's my sword? And I'm going under the Christmas tree that's totally wasting electricity. It's daytime. It's flicking away like a nightmare. Uh, my electricity bill is going to be huge. And I'm going to come this way because this way there is something that is going to assist me. Oh, before I do this, look, I've just fiddled around with the entrance to this cave to make it come down. Is there anything down here? Because I've not lit it up completely. So there might be nasties. But yeah, I turned that into a cave entrance. So I'm going to do something quite interesting with um, a little bit later on. Not sure yet. And I've extended the um, lights that I've got on the side of the road. These street lamps I've got on the side of the road. What was that? What was that? What was that? Face eaters, go away. And um, I've replaced the torches that I had on this road with the street lamps. Because I much, much prefer it. And I'm going to be doing that. Quite a lot, I suspect, all around here. And I've made this kind of um, platform structure. It's got a tall, um, what is that, a tower of wood? No, it's not a tower of wood. It's a blooming great big wall. Big wooden wall that is, we're going to do counting with avos. Is everybody ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By one, two, three, four, five. It's big. It's a big map. Wall. That's what this is going to be. It's going to be my map wall. This side, or maybe the other side, don't know yet, yeah, probably this side, is going to be my zoomed in map. On this side, we are going to have a not zoomed in map. Now, whether or not I'm going to do a single map expansion or whether I'll do a double map expansion, I'm not entirely sure. But I'm not going to do that on this episode because they take blooming ages. But I am going to start to build up the map on this wall. But this is going to be quite a big area. Imagine you've got 10 maps wide by five maps tall. That's going to be a decent bit of pick. And on the other side, it's effectively going to be at least double that. So it could be 20 by 10 um, in terms of zoom in. So that could be quite cool. So what we're going to do now is, where's my map? I'm just going to stick one map in my slot number eight because we're going to make this ground zero. I'm not entirely sure where on the chunk I am at the moment, but if I take this map and if I look at it, it is going to activate the map. So let's have a look. So that's where we are. Can you see? That's where we are. That entire map is activated except for the corners. Can you see that little kind of what looks like a pointery thing in the um, in the bottom there? That is me. If I walk in this direction holding the map, you'll see that the corners just kind of faded away. They weren't quite loaded and now they are. And if I go back this way... You can see I'm moving on the map, but I'm not going off of the map yet because that bit is going to be a second map. So I need to know where does that next bit of map start? So if I come to these stairs here, I'm off the map. Can you see that the arrow has turned into a circle? That means I'm currently off the map. And if I come back here, I'm back on the map. So that's how you know that you are on and off the map. And that's how you know to get a new map. So, so that's kind of where we are. So maps always point north. So that way is north. And we're going to get, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to put that three up. One, two, three. And we're going to put the map there um, to basically, uh, obviously we're not doing it yet because we need item frames. Just to say, I need to put the map in an item frame and then it will create a map wall. So I need to go and get some cows. What I'm hoping is on my wanderings, while I make this map, I'm going to get some cows, which means I'll get some leather, which means I can make some item frames, which means I can actually put this map 
up on the wall. I did mention that. Item frames are a requirement, just to say so. But that's why I've not made anything with the, or put the map up yet. But what we are going to do is we're going to get, this map can go up there. That will always be a map of that chunk from now on. This is the next map. If I look at this map before I leave the chunk, it will become a map of the same chunk. I don't want a map of the same chunk. I want a map of this chunk. So if I then come and look at this map now, it's now a map of this chunk. And you can see, if I go look that way, I'm going to go back towards that chunk. If I turn around here, I'm going out towards this chunk. Can you see how that works? And now I've got two maps of two separate chunks, like that, which is quite nice. Look, you see the, the way the... Um, the nether portal's got all like glowy stuff's going on there with the fire and you can see various bits and pieces there. I quite like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build up a picture and hopefully in my travels I get a few cows and get some leather and then we can make some item frames as well. Let's crack on with that. I just wanted to share with you one of the things that I do when I am doing a mapping exercise like this. So if I come up to somewhere just on the platform here, here we go. Right, so I look uh, putting a map a three by three it could be a four by three it could be five by three but within your inventory box here you put your maps and you put them in kind of the order that they're going to be looked at um so kind of the most north westerly corner will be up here the most southeasterly corner will be down here the center will be down here so if i look here i'm currently on this map look you can see i've made this map i'm currently on it but if i go that way or if i travel west which is this way I go along my bridge, if you remember seeing my bridge, out towards the mate space. If I travel that way, what I'm going to end up with is a map that is further west, which is this map here. And I'm on that map like that, you see? So that means that if I've got empty maps, I know that those maps haven't yet been made and I can go and put those maps you know, wherever I want. I can go and make them and I won't get confused when I physically put them on the wall. It's just a little thing that I do that makes it a lot easier to work out in my head exactly what it is I'm getting up to. So I hope that helps you. Let's crack on with a little bit more map making. Thank goodness I was beginning to think that I'd spawned into a world without cows. Fortunately that is not the case and we've actually got some cows that I can give a bit of a batter into and hopefully... Where are you? Where are you? Don't run away from me cow. I only want, I want your skin in order to make a map. There we go. I'm collecting all kinds of stuff here. Hang on, what have I, ah, see the problem is now, look. Ah, right, I'm gonna have to lob, the, I'm gonna have to get rid of the apples. Cause I've, I've, I've run out of space. Right, so, where's my lever? Where's my lever? Come on. Give me some lever. I'm chasing you, cow, I'm chasing you. Right, we're starting to get some leather. Thank goodness for that. I'm just going to go cow bashing and make some leather now and then we'll get on with this map malarkey. So as you can see, I've not only gathered a load of leather, I've also managed to tempt a couple of cows back into my land, which I had to bring them back all the way across the bridge. It took ages all the way across the bridge and then I've bred them up. So I've now got cows in this area because there weren't any. And I've also noticed here, just as a bit of an aside, I've run out of room in my animal pens here and they are starting to push each other out look i've got sheep and chickens and pigs all over the blooming place because the pens are too small and what they do is they nudge each other through the fence which is a bit of a pain frankly but it's okay i'm not going to lose any sleep over it i think um it's just the way it is i need to build bigger pens anyway so what i'm going to do now is i've got my leather and i'm going to show you what you've got to do let me come through my door hang on i'm going to show you how to make item frames now again you probably already know how to do this, but I'm going to show you anyway how to make item frames. You can see I've done loads of maps. Look, it's absolutely brilliant. So what you need is you get your lever in the middle, then you get sticks, and you go all the way around the outside of the sticks, and you've got an item frame. And it really isn't any more difficult than that. It's dead, dead simple. So I'm going to make a load of item frames. How many have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six by four. So I need 24 item frames. I'll crack on with making those, and we'll get back over to the map wall. <laughs> So we're back over at the map wall. You can see we've got our backs to everything looking for face-eating type beasties. But we've got 24 um, item frames that we've made which match our 24 maps. And you can see here that we've got 19, 12, 11, 9, 10. They're all over the place. I mean, for the numbers make absolutely no sense, which is why it's good to keep it in the grid that you want to physically put them in like that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fill up this wall. If I come to that bit there, that 
is the bottom left hand corner and it goes there and then we've got this one goes there and then we've got this one goes there and then we've got this one whoop hang on this one goes there like that and number two goes there like that and number one goes there like that you can see we've got a straight line of exactly how the world looks there so then what we're going to do is we're going to bring these down in exactly the same order in the same row and we're going to put them here and we'll find once that's that one number two that one number three you can see my bridge how exciting number four number five and number six there you go so you can see that is where the village the center of the village is and you can see there's loads of water i had to go swimming i went swimming holding my map a little bit to get this water sorted so then we also I need to come down and get these down and let's make the rest of this map <laughs> And we have managed to finish the map wall, which I think actually looks really, really nice. So you ready for it? Grand reveal. Boom. That is brilliant. I'm really happy. Look at how much water I am surrounded with. I'm surrounded by so much water. I really like the fact that we're kind of on an island peninsula. And looking at the way that this is starting to build up, you can see that you can see the mate's base just there. Look, that's brilliant. Um, you can see that there is quite a lot of land coming along that we're looking for kind of to the west of where we've already gone so that's why i've kind of placed the map slightly so as the base we're in is slightly to the right because then that means that we've got loads and loads of stuff here in the west that we can fill up and also a little bit more in the north probably not an awful lot there in the east and there's not an awful lot in the south but we're going to make an expanded map as well and perhaps we'll do map stations all over the world as we wander around anyway and then there's one more really important thing I've got to do. Let's go and do it now. Did you guess what it was we had to do? Yep, of course, we had to come and do a mate's base. So we are going to go and introduce the new person to the mate's base right now. Who have we got in there? We are going in the mate's base. Right, so down at the end, we're at episode eight, and I can see a sign on that log to the right. Hmm, I wonder who it could be in there because on here, We've got episode six with Alex and Aaron. We've got episode seven with Anna. And episode eight, Lee Daniel. Lee, you have been unerring in your support of this channel. Thank you so much. You literally watch every single video. Always comment. It is a pleasure to have you in the mate space. Welcome, my friend. I think that might be the end of the episode. <laughs> So if you have enjoyed this video, I'm going to carry on with that map and I'm going to get that well sorted. Maybe it'll be by the time I do the next one. Maybe it won't. I don't know. There's quite a lot of work in making a map uh, like, like that. And it'll be even more work making the expanded map. But I'm really looking forward to doing it. If you've enjoyed the video, please do make sure you slap that like button all over the place. It really, really wants to be slapped. So as it turns nice and blue and it racks up those numbers. And if you haven't done it already, please do make sure you hit the subscribe button. It'll be great to see you in my sub club. And we look forward to seeing you in another video. And as I'm releasing this in another year, you take it easy now. Bye and happy new year.